Hello everyone. This is a quick overview of the Aprilia Performance Ride Control System. Are you ready to take off? Let's go. Now the Aprilia Performance Ride Control System is a sophisticated system that allows you to adjust nine functions or nine parameters to make the bike perform the way you want it to. Now, obviously there's a trade-off between performance and safety. So as you adjust these nine functions, you want to keep the safety factor in mind. Let's begin on the top with the Aprilia launch control. So this would be very relevant if you're a racer. The launch control setting uh, ranges from one to three. Um, three is what you would use if you're getting into it for the first time and you're not so familiar with how the launch control works. Um, but as you gain experience and become an expert racer, you can dial it down to level one. The next is the engine mapping. Again, there are three engine maps at your disposal. Level one is for the performance rider. The trade-off is it would use more gas. And level three is for someone who is getting into superbikes. The next parameter or function you can adjust is the engine braking. I usually set this at two. It ranges from one to three. Um, on the track, I almost never use the rear brake. Instead, as I approach a corner, I use my front brakes, I drop a gear, and then I allow the engine brake to scrub more speed uh, to allow me to tip into the corner. The next um, function you can adjust is the uh, uh, suspension control, the Aprilia suspension control. Now, if you have the electronic suspension, um, it becomes a little more involved and I've got a separate um, slide for the suspension control. But if you don't have the automatic uh, suspension control, then you would adjust the suspension for this motorcycle as you would for any other motorcycle. So the front wheels uh, preload, compression and rebound would be adjusted. And then for the rear wheel, again, the preload, the compression and the rebound would be adjusted as you would for any other bike. The um, next function you can adjust is the uh, anti-lock braking system. Uh, it is a cornering braking system, so it uh, measures your lean angle to keep the bike um, from locking up, to, to keep the wheels from locking up. It has uh, three levels and uh, depending on how much you want it to intervene, um, you would select one, two, or three. One is the least, um, one will have the least interference, and three would have uh, the most interference. The next parameter you can, you can adjust is the uh, traction control, and its level ranges from one all the way up to eight. So if you're an expert rider, you would leave it at one. Um, and if you are a, be a beginner or if the road conditions are bad, you would go towards uh, a higher number. So the higher the number, the more the intervention. And basically the traction control system is gonna keep um, the rear wheel from uh, spinning. The next parameter you can adjust is the wheelie control. The wheelie control also ranges from one to three. Uh, one has the least amount of intervention, so it would give you some wheelies. So if you wanna be popping a wheelie on the front straight, you know, go at it. Uh, obviously, if the energy is being used to lift the bike, uh, instead of propelling the bike forward, it's not going to help your lap time, but hey, it looks great. So if that's what you want, that's, you could do that. The next function you could adjust is the quick shift, and this is simply on or off. Um, the quick shift allows you to up uh, shift and down shift without using the clutch. Uh, this is a system that was designed for use on the racetrack uh, to reduce lap times but I don't see any reason why you shouldn't use it even if you're on the street. And then the ninth or the last uh, function you could um, play with is the pit, uh, pit lane speed limiter. A lot of track day organizations and race organizations require you to um, limit your speed once you enter the pit lane. And so this pit lane speed limiter will allow you to restrict the speed. So it is an on off sort of switch, but if it is on, you can uh, restrict the speed 
uh, from I think between 19 miles per hour all the way up to 56 miles per hour. So it really depends on your track, the organization and, and your particular set of circumstances. All right, so there you have it. These are the nine factors or nine functions that you could adjust. I'm going to take a deeper dive into the Aprilia suspension control system in a second. Um, and then once we complete this 30,000 feet overview, we'll go to the bike and turn it on and I'll help you um, toggle between the various screens to where you can adjust these functions. All right, so if you have the Aprilia um, automatic suspension, then what you have is the Olin's Smart EC 2.0 system. And what that is, is that it has the suspension control unit, which is like a brain for the suspension. And the suspension control unit, this brain, reads the road conditions and automatically adjusts the front damping, the rear damping, and then it gives you brake support, acceleration support, and mid-corner support. So basically it gives you stability during braking, stability during accelerating, and then stability in the middle of a corner. So all the boxes in blue are available to you if you have the automatic suspension. If you don't have the automatic suspension, if you're doing it manually, then you have access to the orange boxes. So that means you would have to manually um, adjust the front compression, the front rebound, the rear, comp the rear compression, and the rear rebound. All right, in both cases, that means whether you are automatic or manual, you would have to adjust the spring preload of the front and rear su suspension manually. So that is not something that would be automatically done for you. So what this means is that if you're at um, a track day, you should find your favorite suspension guy, whether that's uh, Thermos Man or Dave Moss or Turn One or anybody else that you trust. And you need to have them adjust the preload for your weight and um, then you're good to go. And then the steering damper, um, if you are automatic, then the suspension control unit does adjust the steering damper. However, if you are, uh, if you don't have the automatic and you are in the manual mode, I believe that the steering damper is fixed and you cannot adjust it. So that's something you might want to uh, verify. And if so, maybe you want to change uh, the steering damper to an aftermarket one. That's your choice. All right, so that's an overview of the Aprilia suspension control for automatic slash manual. Um, I want to take a little deeper dive into this. So if you are manual, you know, how many clicks do you have for the compression, rebound, etc. So we'll take a look at that. And then if you're in the automatic mode, um, what are the preset values and can you toggle um, between them or among them? So a little deeper dive into the uh, suspension system for the spike is what's coming up next. All right, so having the Aprilia suspension control system work for you means that you could still select uh, the automatic mode or the manual mode. Now, if you select the automatic mode, it's not like it's a big black box and, and you, you, do, you don't have to do anything else, no. Um, they still give you some control. So you could select A1, A2, or A3, and each of those choices has uh, a certain um, value for uh, the front damping, uh, the rear damping. And likewise, if you choose um, A2, then it has another set of values for the front uh, damping and the rear damping and likewise for A3. So A1 you would use if um, you know, you're know you an advanced rider on the track, whether or not you, you're uh, using a slick tire. Um, active track would be somewhat in the middle and then active road would be if the road conditions are bad or the track conditions are bad, you wanna go with A3. Um, if you're in the manual mode, again, it's not like they just leave you to your own devices. They actually allow you to select M1, M2, or M3, 
and then each of these choices has a set of pre-configured values for the compression, for the rebound, etc. And I'll show you those values in a minute. Uh, but like I said, you could select M1 uh, if you're out on the track and um, you're, you're riding fast. You know that would be the starting point for you, and you can certainly adjust it from there. Uh, M2 is in the middle, and then M3 would be what you might choose if uh, the road conditions are bad or the track conditions are bad. Okay, so what are these pre-configured values? Let's take a deeper dive into that. All right, so as I mentioned, even in the automatic mode, it's not like it's a big black box and you have no choice. No, you still have a choice and you can choose between A1, A2, or A3 on the suspension settings. And so if you choose A1, um, then the front firmness is set at two, the rear firmness is set at two, the brake support is set at two, the acceleration and mid corner support are zero, and the steering damper is set at two. Now notice you don't have control over the front compression individually. You do not have control over the front extension or the rebound. Likewise, for the rear compression and rear rebound, you don't have control over any of those in the active um, setting. And uh, if you're not happy with it, if you want to individually control the compression and the extension, well, no problem. You switch out of the automatic mode and you switch into the manual mode. And now you see that in the manual mode, you have individual control over the front compression, the front rebound, the rear compression, the rear rebound, and you also have control over the steering damper. Now, this again is one of the reasons I chose the factory version over the regular RSV4. Um, of course, I had the budget for it, but also the factory version allows me to switch out of the automatic mode and get into the manual mode and adjust the bike as I would if it were a regular bike. So that was one of the main reasons um, I chose the factory version. All right, so this is a slide that kind of brings the whole thing together. So I would call this the uh, Aprilia Performance Right Control System in a nutshell. So on the, the first column shows you the six maps. And in an earlier slide, I had categorized these six maps into um, three in the road mode and then three in the race mode. And you'll notice that uh, the first map, the user map in the road mode, it's fully customizable. And so this table shows you seven of the functions that can be customized. And then the um, race mode has two maps that are fully customizable, the track one and the track two. And so this table again shows you all the parameters, seven of the nine parameters that can be customized. Now the two parameters that are not here in this table are the quick shift and the pit lane speed limiter. So you can adjust the uh, AQ, AQS or the quick shifter, I assume it's gonna be turned on, uh, but it's your choice. And then you can adjust the pit lane speed limiter as you see fit. Uh, so this is an excellent slide that brings together seven of those nine functions or parameters and then maps them against the engine mapping. There are some sort of cautions uh, in the bottom uh, and which again speaks to the trade-off between performance and safety. So this is something you want to keep in mind as you adjust the bike and uh, have fun with it. All right, so the next step is for us to actually go to the bike, turn it on and see how we can adjust these parameters. So let's do that. And uh, let's also give a quick thanks to the yellow jacket that's been with us and is now ready to take off.